hello everyone welcome to qcon europe 2021 it's happy to have you here right so today we are going to talk about sick scheduling introduction and deep dive with mike dame and me as presenters we are both from red hat working on the openshift project and we are very interested in scheduling and everything around it Well, just in short, we will uh, summarize what SIG uh, scheduling is, where can you find us and talk to us. Then we'll uh, give you an update about what's new in the, uh, the scheduling area. And at the end, we'll talk about updates in the uh, Descheduler uh, project. Currently, we have two uh, um, uh, co-chairs. Abdullah uh, Galaybek from uh, Google and Wei Huang from IBM. Meetings are taking place every uh, second week on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you want to reach us, you can find us at the SIG uh, scheduling channel on the Slack. The SIG uh, scheduling is home to uh, several uh, projects, namely uh, uh, Schedule. Uh, plugins. It is a home to out of tree uh, plugins, which can be used alongside the in tree uh, plugins, which are provided in the scheduling framework. There's a descheduler uh, project whose goal is to make sure that bots violating uh, scheduling constraints are evicted. Then there's a, a, a cluster capacity, which is uh, which, uh, whose goal is to estimate uh, remaining uh, scheduling capacity in terms of pods. So, for example, if you want to know how many instances of your uh, database pod can be still uh, scheduled in your cluster, then and there's a QBatch uh, project, which is an implementation of the gang uh, scheduling, and there is a Poseidon, which is an implementation of the uh, firmament uh, scheduler. In case you are interested in more details about uh, uh, the projects, just take a look at the SIG uh, scheduling readme. So the, uh, we are not going to talk in detail about how uh, scheduling works or what it is, because the last two talks uh, given at uh, KubeCon discussed those parts. The talk uh, given at uh, KubeCon North America discussed uh, the uh, scheduling uh, from the perspective of a user, admin, and developer. And the uh, talk uh, given in Europe uh, talked about uh, scheduling framework and what the uh, scheduler is. So in short, how the scheduling works. You have a few of pods which are uh, still uh, needs to be scheduled, which means uh, they have no node assigned to them yet. Then there's a list of nodes which are suitable for uh, scheduling. And there is a, a scheduler component, which what it does is that it uh, uh, takes every pod which needs to be scheduled and find the most uh, suitable node for it. The uh, schedule component consists of a, a scheduling algorithm, queues, cache, and uh, plugins which are provided by the uh, scheduling uh, framework. So the uh, scheduler was uh, designed with the goal to uh, provide a very simple implementation and to uh, maximize uh, throughput. Uh, and basically how it works is that you uh, get a, a list of nodes, you run uh, filters, which gives you a list of uh, feasible nodes. And in case there are two or more nodes, the uh, score plugins will give you the node, which is the highest score. So once a pot is uh, scheduled, the scheduler no longer knows what's going to happen with the pod. So 
eventually some of the pods may diverge uh, from the original scheduling plan. So that's where the disk schedule uh, component comes. And its goal is to make sure that uh, based that some of these uh, scheduling criteria are still respected, contains a list of strategies, each strategy responsible for uh, a scheduling constraint. And once it's run, it goes through every pod, every node, and in case a pod violates the constraint, the pod is evicted from its node. So for example, uh, some nodes may be over-utilized, so the, the scheduler just evicts as many pods as is needed to make sure that resources are freed from the over-utilized node with hope that those pods will land at a node that is underutilized. Right, so now let's talk about more about what's new and what's been improved. So there's been some improvements in the documentation for developers. New document has been created which uh, describes how the uh, scheduling queues work. In short, there are three uh, scheduling queues, active queue, uh, back of queue, and unscheduled queue. Active queue keeps pods which can be scheduled. Back of queue keeps pods which are put to sleep for a while. And the unscheduled queue keeps uh, pods which uh, cannot be scheduled for some reason. There's a life cycle, the document describes a life cycle of a pod, how it um, transitions between individual queues based on certain conditions or events. So if you are interested in more detail, you can take a look at the new document. There's also a new document describing the code architecture of the default scheduler and how it's built on top of the scheduling framework. So in short, there are basic uh, building blocks like uh, scheduling uh, algorithm, cache, queues, and the uh, scheduling uh, framework. And because the uh, scheduler allows you to configure various profiles, each profile corresponds to an instance of the scheduling framework. So once uh, configured and assembled together, you get a functioning uh, uh, scheduler component. Again, if you are interested in more uh, details, just take a, look, take a look at the new uh, document. And then there's a, a scheduler plugins uh, repository. So in case the uh, default entry plugins are not enough, you can bake in additional plugins which are provided by the scheduler plugin repository, the home to out of three plugins, which some of which you might find useful. Uh, currently, there are seven uh, plugins, for example, the uh, course, uh, scheduling, which allows you to uh, add the capability of uh, gang uh, scheduling. And if you have a new plugin which you want to share with the uh, community, the, uh, the scheduler plugins is a good place to start. Yeah, now uh, I will let uh, Mike talk. Mike? Yeah, thanks, Jan. Um, I'm Mike Dame, like you mentioned, and uh, I'm going to go over some other things that are going on in the SIG here that were some improvements that we have for the scheduler. The first one is this has been kind of an ongoing project of um, refactoring out some of the internal dependencies on our default plugins. Uh, we have a lot of a lot of the plugins will depend on parts of code that are from uh, KTIO slash Kubernetes. And them being connected to this large code base uh, is makes it difficult for the plugins to be more modular, um, in, which would be helpful if they could be used by other projects like Descheduler or um, any sort of scheduling sub projects that you might have. Um, so we've just been working on 
trying to remove those. And uh, one of the great outcomes from this has been the new uh, component helpers staging repo within Kato. Uh, Jan was a big uh, help for getting that going. And that really gives us an opportunity to move like common helpers and helper functions out of uh, maybe like internal packages and into a place where any project, even not specifically related to scheduling, could import them. So, like for example, we had a couple of helpers that just um, they just parsed out if a pod has tolerations for taints on a node and just returned a check for that. So there wasn't really any reason for that to be strictly internal, but so we put it into a external package where people can use it. And these packages in the repo are all owned by their respective SIGs. So you know that you're getting um, a good maintainability that if I'm using this function from somewhere, it'll always have you know a semantic meaning behind it that the team is supporting. Uh, so if you check out this issue, you'll see that's been going on for a while and you'll see links to the component helpers repo. Um, I think it's just github.com slash Kubernetes slash component dash helpers, uh, but you'll see it in there too. If you want to help out, this is a great thing to get involved with. It's a good project for um, new contributors uh, because you'll learn a little bit about the code base as you're moving these functions around and updating their references and other places. So. Some other things that we improved on are we had some run runtime improvements uh, for certain plugins. Um, a big push that's going on right now that I think we just got some changes in for 120 is the event-based requeuing of unschedulable pods. Um, previously, uh, the the event queue or the unscheduled queue would just requeue pods uh, kind of indiscriminately whenever events came in. And the work that's been going on with this allows certain plugins to register for certain events that should trigger pods to uh, go back to the unschedulable. So this will be more efficient requeuing of those pods that will probably, that will hopefully be more reactive to things that are actually going on in the cluster. Uh, we also made some improvements to the Node Affinity plugin, just improved uh, the throughput on that. And there's some discussion in that issue on how we got that and how, how it was found and how it was uh, taken care of and the last thing isn't isn't so much a uh, performance improvement but it is a big improvement for pod affinity and that we now have a uh, you can widen the scope for namespaces for the pod affinity plugin so previously the pod affinity only really cared about no or pods within the same namespace so in this picture here you can see like we have uh, three different nodes and if we wanted these pods from different namespaces for whatever reason that we have to be co-located on the same node. There wasn't really a way to do that, but now you can broaden the scope of pod affinity to look at multiple namespaces, um, which would be hopefully useful for some people. We also have ongoing work for the scheduler component config. Um, if you've been following the scheduling framework in specific, uh, the Scheduler is really heavily configured through component config. Starting to move away from flags for some things and definitely the old policy API, uh, which is something that if you're still using, you should be start seriously looking at a plugin config through the component config. But there's still improvements uh, to be made to that, including some of the things that I've listed here, some, some of the plugins that um, have been replaced by other uh, more more featureful plugins are being deprecated. So that's things like node label, service affinity, node prefer avoid pods. Those are going to be deprecated, moved away from, and there's replacements for them that are available. Um, we also have the node resources plugins, the various node resources such as uh, balance usage, uh, least usage, which tries to spread pods out um, most most allocated resources, which is for bin packing when you want to prefer nodes that have the most resources on them already. We're going to be trying to unify those into a single plugin because there are a bunch of similar plugins that are adjacent to each other. 
And so it, it would be a lot easier for people to understand if they can be configured from a single place. Um, we've also been exploring the possibility of fully qualified plugin names, especially for our entry plugins, the ones that are part of the core Kubernetes would like to provide a well-defined uh, name semantics for them so that you can at least identify in, an entry plugin from a custom plugin. This is a big part of the framework sort of ecosystem of trying to have out of tree plugins coexist well with entry plugins. It's just an organizational uh, setup for them. And then uh, in this issue, some various backwards compatibility removals that we currently have in place. Um, so don't need to get too much into detail of those. A couple little hacks just to make like older versions of the policy work with newer versions. But as this uh, config is evolving, obviously we're gonna have to uh, move away from that. So if you are heavily using the current scheduler config, it's important to stay up to date on some of these changes and be aware of them. Um, you know, nothing will be removed outside of the allowed deprecation timeline. So you always have that, um, but eventually some things that you might be relying on could be removed and you wanna be prepared for that change. And uh, lastly, for the scheduler framework, we have these uh, two, two unique use cases that were brought up to me. Um, I think Wei uh, actually sent those to me. I wanted to talk about them a little bit. Um, so these are real world use cases for the scheduler framework. Um, these are links to some blog posts. So the slides will be shared and you'll be able to check these out, but they're very interesting. The first one is from Cockroach Labs, um, basically discussing uh, how they came up with their own custom filter plugin and how they used that, what their problem was to be able to scale Cockroach DB uh, up and down. Um, one of the interesting things that they talk about is how they actually considered using pod topology constraints, which if you're not already using pod topology constraints, uh, if you're on Kubernetes, I think 118, it was enabled by default. So if you're on there, uh, this is, I think, one of the most helpful plugins that's available right now in the scheduler for evenly distributing pods among nodes. Um, especially with the descheduler too, this kind of goes jumping ahead a bit. Uh, I see a lot of people that try to, that want to distribute like a deployment of pods across nodes and they'll run the descheduler for resource balancing. And they'll say, well, why are two or three of these pods still on the same node? It's because you have to consider the resource usage of the entire node. But with topology constraints like this, you can specifically say, I want, these pods to be distributed evenly, um, no matter what. And that's just very helpful for making sure that you can get those uh, spread out. The second blog post here was from OpenAI, and that is less specifically about their um, what they're doing with the scheduler, but talking about scaling Kubernetes up to 7,500 nodes. Very interesting. They talk about some scheduling aspects. Uh, they have some sort of controller that is managing taints automatically based on who's creating certain pods as tolerations for those taints based on teams. They uh, they also talk about this concept of setting up, uh, they call them balloon deployments. It's really interesting, they're kind of like dummy deployments to keep the cluster auto scaler from automatically scaling nodes up and down. And I wanted to draw attention to this because we do some similar stuff in like some of our scheduling end to ends where we'll create uh, some dummy pods that just try to balance out the cluster so that the test can run consistently. And um, they also touch on using pod anti affinity to get even spreading, which was pretty much the way to get even pod spreading before pod topology constraints with the caveat that when you set a pod anti affinity to itself, you can only have one copy of that pod per node. And uh, with pod topology constraints, you can set up having I want two or three within a certain skew. But 
this was a, a, an older way to kind of hack the scheduler into getting uh, a nice even spreading, no matter what, regardless of resource usage. Um, but they they ultimately end up going with the co-scheduling plugin from the scheduler plugins repo, which Jan mentioned a couple slides back. So it, it's great to see that people are using this, and these are setting some examples for new users to go by when they want to adopt the framework. So finally, we're going to get to uh, up some updates on the descheduler. Descheduler is a project. Uh, it's one of the bigger projects under SIG scheduling, where we, like uh, earlier, talked about it removes pods from nodes following general scheduling logic. The first thing to talk about here is that uh, we've added, we've updated our reviewers and approvers to add uh, some of these great uh, contributors. You know, besides myself and Jan, we have uh, Sean and Lee, who have been really active and are just doing great stuff for this project. Uh, so along with adding these people so that you, as a new contributor, if you're interested, your PR should get assigned to a relevant uh, administrator of the project. And um, if you have any questions, these are some of the active contributors to work with. We moved some of our uh, existing maintainers to an emeritus status. Uh, so that's like uh, Avesh and Ravi and Klaus. And those guys were great for getting the project started and uh, establishing it. And that's a good way to recognize their contributions that they've done, um, even though they might not be able to actively review PRs right now. So these are people to get in touch with. Um, a couple of new features that we added this release, some uh, Prometheus metrics, which was a big ask. Um, so the descheduler will report, will report metrics on pods, is that number of pods that are evicted and uh, things like that. So you can track how it's running in your cluster. Um, label selector filtering for different strategies to be able to select pods more specifically. Um, eviction based on pod topology spreading soft constraints, which we originally added this just with the hard constraints for pod topology spread. Uh, but people asked about adding the soft constraints, so we went ahead and did it, and that is an option now. Also, um, the ability to ignore pods with persistent volume claims. Um, the, the scheduler by default ignores pods with uh, um, local storage, but some people wanted to specify that just for the PVC instead. And so now you can prevent evicting those pods that are attached to the PVC. And something else that's going on, uh, we're trying to work on a way to make the descheduler more reactive to events in the cluster, kind of similar to what I talked about before with the scheduler being reactive to um, events for moving pods from unschedulable to schedulable. The descheduler right now only runs either on a periodic loop or you can run it as a cron job or a job, um, but having it actually listen to what's happening in the cluster and then run the relevant strategies based on that could give people more um, instant reaction and balancing in their cluster than having to wait for the descheduler loop to come back up. So a lot of these have been like I said, requests from people. Um, if you have anything that you're interested in helping out with on the descheduler or questions or features that you'd like to see um, or contribute, we're also on SIG scheduling to talk about it there. That's our main Slack channel. Um, or just feel free to hop on the GitHub page and open an issue, start a conversation about what you're seeing, what you'd like to see. Um, we are always looking for new contributors for this project as well. So, um, yep, that is our presentation, and I want to thank everyone for coming. At this point, we will be opening up for um, live Q&A. If you have any questions on something we talked about or something that we didn't talk about that you were hoping that we could get to, uh, now is the time to ask. Thank you.